Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy Hodges, advocate for OCD, in particular Pure OCD, which is also the name of my memoir. Pure OCD, the invisible side of obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm a certified peer support specialist working across the world with individuals who are working toward recovery in whatever stage that might be. I can also provide referrals for therapists anywhere in the world. Also, no CD and OCD is an app. Inside the app, they have uh, opportunities for resources to connect with other people who have OCD, and they also do telehealth. So check them out at treatmyocd.com. Today we're gonna to talk about rumination. Uh, it's such a good timing for me. I'm about to go to Germany. I'm doing this video uh, here on August 31st, I believe. I think that's the date, in 2023. Um, I'm leaving to go to Germany next week. My nonprofit is doing an event there. And travel is always really scary for me. It's always anxiety provoking. I've been trying to evaluate recently why it is, uh, but it's just tough, the unknown, the uncertainty. Uh, being in a different city, I don't know anything about Germany, so uh, it, it's gonna be exciting but tough. I also wanted to say thank you for those of you that have uh, reached out knowing that I have that kind of anxiety and knowing that I can call on you if I need it, if I feel like I just wanna burn everything down. Really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about rumination today, but I want to preface this chat um, with you may not agree with what I'm going to talk about today, and that's okay, because I'm specifically talking about the lived experience of OCD, which as we know is very different than any other experience of just living life and ruminating or anything else of the sort, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about rumination in regard to living with OCD and in particular intrusive thoughts with mental rituals and if you have been a ruminator since you were a child or you've gotten into this habit of rumination being very habitual every day all day um, and you're just learning how to recognize it and or stop it uh, taboo Tracy uh, on, I just want to give a shout out to her. Uh, she just did a video about this on her YouTube channel too. She's a good friend of mine. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and do a video as well to support that. As, and I also wanted to give you another resource if you need it. So go look her up. Um, she talks about all things OCD and taboo, intrusive thoughts as well. So rumination, let's go. Okay, rumination is a compulsion. And rumination is a kind of natural way of um, dealing with intrusive thoughts or just in general life when there's uncertainty. You ruminate about finding an answer to something that doesn't have an answer. A great example of rumination would be um, you have an altercation or a, a disagreement or something, not altercation like fight, <laughs> but like a disagreement or something at work and then you leave and you ruminate that night of how are things gonna be tomorrow? How are we gonna resolve this? You may ruminate in your head about how the, how the conversation's gonna go over and over and over and over, but it's unsolvable, right? Because you're not sitting in front of the person that you had the disagreement with, so you're just, sitting in your brain going, maybe this will happen, maybe that will happen, but you don't really know. So you're trying to solve this question that can't be solved until you're actually facing it. So this is a natural response to uncertainty in people's lives. For those of us with OCD, we are ruminating trying to solve an unsolvable question, but the problem is, is that it's unsolvable. So you don't get the confrontation. You don't get the opportunity to say, oh look, this all worked out and all the stuff I ruminated about didn't mean anything. <laughs> so rumination is ongoing. What I wanna talk about today is when we are looking at therapy and we're looking at recovery, what do we know about that? Reducing the compulsions. Okay, or stopping the compulsions. Rumination is always up there with this um, with this idea of how can I stop ruminating when A, I have been doing it since I was a little kid and B, it is automatic and C, 
I don't know how to stop it because half the time I don't even know how to recognize it. So let's talk about all that. So sometimes people will say, well, I say this and, um, you know, I love Michael Greenberg. Uh, if you don't know of his stuff, go and check him out. Uh, drmichaeljgreenberg.com. So he talks a lot about rumination and how rumination is a choice. Um, I believe that rumination is also a choice, but this is what I also, so there's a little fruit fly here. There, this is what I also believe. The choice is so hard because rumination is like a safety blanket. Rumination, I want to ruminate. I have been ruminating since before I can remember. I don't remember life without rumination. In fact, I don't think my life existed without rumination. So if I don't have the ability to ruminate, I feel lost. However, rumination is an energy suck. It's a time suck. It's it's a OCD fuel. And so what you want is to get in a place where you understand how rumination is for you recognize when it's happening and choose to stop it. Again, I want to emphasize the choice to stop it is hard for us. A, we want to find the answer to whatever the hell we're ruminating about. <laughs> and B, we, so many of us live with rumination to the point where we feel safer when we're ruminating. We actually don't know how to exist without rumination. But there's another component to this. When we think about and we talk about stopping compulsions all the way, rumination is so automatic for so many of us, whether that be about OCD or whether that be about childhood trauma or other trauma we've experienced or just part of our makeup, it is an automatic response. And so when we talk about, or we go into therapy and it's, okay, you need to stop all of your compulsions. And you just think to yourself, I, I, I already ruminated, so I failed. Or, oh my gosh, I have to be on top of not ruminating all the time. So what would that mean? All day, every day, you're like, don't ruminate, don't ruminate, which then becomes rumination about not ruminating, <laughs> which then breeds perfectionism which is not good when it comes to OCD or OCD treatment, but also it's unrealistic because majority of people in the world ruminate. So what is the solution? The solution is recognizing how rumination shows up for you, having self-compassion self -compassion and non-judgment when you automatically ruminate because so many of us do. You, I want you to hear me. You are not a failure if you ruminate after an intrusive thought or after an event or after anything and then you recognize that you're doing it. There is no, oh my God, I did a compulsion so the whole fucking day is ruined. No. Recovery is recognizing when you are doing compulsions and making the choice to stop them or making the choice to delay them or making the choice to do them as long as it's your choice. Choice is the foundation of recovery. What happens is we see these, this blogs or literature or whatever else about how rumination and mental review and avoidance and these things are compulsions. And if you're doing compulsions, you're in the cycle and you're, you suck and you don't have recovery. Like, fuck that. <laughs> like for real, fuck that. Okay. Because so many of us, A, have lived with OCD for so long and B, have childhood trauma or other trauma or other shit on top of it that drives a lot of our automatic behaviors when things happen. Trauma responses automatically happen to us, right? So when they happen, it's our job to learn what they are like, how to recognize them, and then how to make choices on how to react to them. That, my friends, is the epitome of recovery. 
Some days, and I've said this before, some days I make the choice to ruminate. Does that mean I'm not in recovery? No. If you think that means I'm not in recovery, then fuck you and fuck off. And I know that sounds harsh, but I don't care. I actually am really getting tired of people coming at me and being like, oh, you admit you have compulsions. You shouldn't do videos. You aren't in recovery. No, sis and bro, you aren't in my brain. You don't understand my recovery. So just fuck off, seriously. Everyone's recovery is different. It is personal. There are some days it is difficult to resist compulsions. And so what we are hearing sometimes on social media and from people that are advocates that just don't have the connection to the community or the understanding of recovery, what we're hearing is, well, if you do compulsions, you're backsliding or you're not really in recovery or you're not this or you're not that, whatever. Recovery is fluid. Recovery takes a long time. You don't just get therapy and boom, you're better and life is great. You have to relapse, you have to lapse, you have to find what works for you, you have to find different strategies that work for you, whether that's ERP or ACT or other ways of approaching OCD, approaching compulsions, and you are allowed to not be perfect. Hear me when I say that. If you are not perfect, that does not mean you aren't working toward recovery or you're not in recovery or whatever. Like, Throw the whole definition out of recovery, <laughs> right? You are your own journey of living with OCD. Rumination is a tough compulsion because for many of us, it automatically happens. And so when that is the case, regardless of whether that is OCD or trauma or whatever else, my recovery looks like recognizing I am, I am um, ruminating and I'm gonna make a choice. And some days I choose this and some days I choose that. And that is not a reflection of where I'm at in my recovery. That is a reflection of the fact that I have agency. And that, my friends, is recovery. Having agency in the entire scenario of living with OCD. So the whole point of my video today is that I wanted to come on here and tell you recovery might take a long time. Recovery has different little roads. You learn little tidbits here and there, but if you are engaging in compulsions and you recognize it, then you go, oh no, I'm engaging in compulsions. I'm a failure. Throw that out the window. You are not a failure because you recognize you were doing compulsions and now you have a choice. And choice and agency is empowerment. And that's where we are striving to be in our recovery. So I hope that this helps. Remember, rumination is just a compulsion. It's part of living with OCD. And when you are engaging in it, and you recognize it, kudos and congratulations to you. See it and make a choice. Do you want to delay? Do you want to stop it then? Do you not want to stop it? Some days are tough and you can't. Um, that is up to you. At the end of the day, yes, we do want to reduce compulsions, um, but again, there are some days where I just think to myself, I don't have the energy, I'm exhausted, I am X, Y, and Z. That doesn't mean anything about my recovery. What it means is I am in control and I have agency. In some days, I don't do as well as other days, even if we wanna look at it as doing well. The way I look at it is every single day I get to make choices about my recovery, and you do too. So I hope this helps. Uh, please visit chrissyhodges.com if you have, if you're interested in doing peer support or referral consultations, and then treatmyocd.com if you are looking for no CD telehealth and resources from them. Um, I will probably do a video from Germany. Looking forward to it. I don't even want to think about all the intrusive thoughts that are going to come on the way there. But whatever, it'll be all right. <laughs> I hope that you have a great week and great weekend, and I will see you next time.